school is out, which means summer fun is in. And if your family is at all like mine, that means a lot of time outside. Whether hiking, camping, swimming at the lake, floating down the river, chilling at a picnic or a barbecue, or just playing in the backyard. You know, all of the summer fun things. And with summer fun things often comes a myriad of unfun summer things. You know, like the bug bites, the bee stings, sunburns, grill burns, and let's not forget all of the random sprains and strains we have to deal with, right? So in today's video, I'm going to share with you my top must-have herbs for summer fun and first aid. And for those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Mel. I'm a clinical herbalist, educator, and product formulator on a big old mission to teach more moms to use plants as medicine in the most safe and effective ways. So if you love learning this stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be in the know when I share more videos about how you can use herbs and plants to take better care of yourself and your family. Okay, okay. So I admit that this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Mostly because all the summer fun things are everything I live for. I mean, the whole reason I got my start in herbalism is because I was a backpacking guide and wilderness therapist. And I got chapped at all the harsh toxic chemicals and crap my clients were putting on their bodies. It made me really mad. I mean, here they were paying me hundreds of dollars to walk them through my favorite, most sacred and beautiful spaces. Yet they had this junk that was not only polluting their bodies, but more importantly to me, polluting our precious planet. Anyways, it was during those years that I started wondering what these plants were that were growing around me and how could I use them? And you know what? It turns out that many of them are phenomenal for first aid. Who would have thunk, right? So to this day, I still spend my time hiking, adventuring, rafting with the fam, and all those super fun outdoorsy things you would think of if you knew someone lived in a mountain community, which I do. I love it and I live my life for it. And I hope to help preserve it for many, many future generations. And sadly, as it looks right now, that may not happen. But we can start to make changes, right? We can start right here by learning about the plants that you can easily access or grow in your garden that can help you. More often than not, they're gonna help you more than the junk you buy in the store to stock your first aid kit with. So inevitably, we're also at that time of year where all of my mom friends start asking me about this one thing. Well, it's more like 10 or 20 things, but it never fails that during summertime, some accident happens when everyone is out on their summer adventures and they're wondering what kind of natural remedy can help them. Maybe you've wondered the same thing before too. If you have, let me know in the comments below. What's been your worst summer fun incident that you wish you had a natural remedy for? And on that note, let's dive into the info, shall we? So, one of my go-to herbs when it comes to anything involving major cuts, scrapes, or blood escaping from the body in some way or another is yarrow. It's a beautiful plant and it happens to grow in pretty great abundance around where I live in the Mount Hood area of Oregon. And it's super easy for you to grow in your garden too. Yara's Latin name is Achillea millifolium and it's said that Achilles was dipped in a bath of yarrow tea by his heel. And this is what made him so invincible. So Achilles then turned around and used yarrow to help heal his wounded soldiers. So that's where the genus name came from of Achillea. And the species millifolium speaks to its leaves, meaning thousand leaves, 
which almost resembles kind of a feather. If you look closely, you can see all of these little leaflets within the one leaf, hence the name millifolium, or again, thousand leaves. Anyways, yarrow is a fantastic styptic herb, which simply means that it can stop bleeding. I've used this while camping when my friend sliced his thumb open while cutting vegetables for our dinner. Fortunately, being the plant nerd that I am, I had already scouted our campground for all the plant friends that I knew, and I saw that yarrow was all over. Not only will yarrow help stop the bleeding for him, it's also a great vulnerary herb or a wound healer, and it has excellent antibacterial properties too. So it's going to help keep infection out and speed the healing process for that cut. Not too shabby for a plant that just might be growing on the trail you're walking down or that you can easily grow yourself. And back to finding it on that trail, please, please be mindful of knowing 100% without a doubt that's yarrow you're looking at when you're in need. There are some lookalikes that could be mistaken, like Queen Anne's lace, or worse yet, poison hemlock, which, as it names, its name sounds, is indeed poisonous and can lead to death. So yeah, it is super important to know your plants. Get a plant ID book or find a local herbalist to take a plant walk with and make sure you know the plants that you are trying to use as medicine. And of course, if you're out harvesting this year, please, please, triple, quadruple, please, only harvest where there's an abundance of the plant. Don't take more than a quarter, or I should say a tenth of the stand, and make sure there is plenty left for regeneration. Or, Perhaps you could also bring along some new seeds to plant as an offering to the land to ensure more for future generations. Of course, if you're growing your own, there's no doubt in the sustainability of it all. And that's stellar. Please keep doing that. I went on a bit of a rant there, but I really, really want to emphasize the importance of that rant. We need these plants for all of us. And with the greed that is seen in our society today, it's really important to think of these things when it comes to wild crafting and using plants as medicine. I know I said rant over, but it's pretty much my whole life's mission and the entire reason I have this channel and such a love for teaching people about plant medicine. So about that plant medicine, let's move on to the next absolute must have herb on my list of summer fun and first aid herbs. This one I love for so many reasons too. Wait, do I say that about every herb I talk about? Yeah, I just might, but I also mean it. There's just so much to love. And this next one is an absolute go-to when it comes to anyone getting banged up, bruised, sprained, strained, and yes, even broken bones. Can you guess what it is? It's comfrey, and it's super easy to grow in your garden, if not incredible to grow for your garden, and use as a compost and soil enrichment. Comfrey is another stellar vulnerary herb, meaning it helps to heal wounds. It's really rich in this constituent called allantoin, and allantoin helps to regenerate skin cells, which is really helpful when you've got wounds. So yes, I use it in my facial oils too. And I recently used it with yarrow when my partner cut himself using the paper cutter in our shop. He was squirting blood all over and had a pretty deep cut. And lucky for him, I'm an herbalist and we were working inside our own herbal apothecary. 
So as you might guess, yes, I had Comfrey and I had Yarrow on hand. So I made a little bit of a, like a little tea bag. I put some hot water over it to get it moist and activate those medicinal constituents. And I placed it on his thumb and had him hold his arm up over his head. And within minutes, the bleeding stopped. It was pretty amazing and blew his mind for sure. We kept doing the yarrow and the comfrey for a couple of days and his really deep cut healed so quickly and did not require a trip to the ER that I think most people would have taken and we were certainly considering taking. But so, today he has a fully functioning thumb and just a little bit of scar tissue there. And it's thanks to these amazing plants. Comfrey is also a bit of a hemostatic, which means that it's going to help your blood to clot. So that's obviously going to be really helpful in the case of a wound or any kind of bleeding, gaping gash in the body, which I guess is a wound. like this situation that my partner Chris was in. And paired with yarrow, it's a super powerful plant combo. And another reason I find comfrey to be absolutely amazing as a healer is that when it comes to the speeding of healing of bruises and sprains and strains, in fact, I've helped many friends who have sprained their ankles and it prevented them from working. They'd go to the doc and doc would say, oh, sorry, six weeks off the ankle. And I'd say, here, try this comfrey oil. And yes, sometimes I'd add in something extra like Arnica or Cayenne too, but I really credit the comfrey here. And wouldn't you know it, they'd come back to me in absolute amazement in two weeks saying how much better they were and how their doctor's mind was absolutely blown too. So it's really that good for healing these things. And another amazing thing about comfrey, which is also commonly known as knit bone or bone set as well, as the name suggests, it's amazing when it comes to healing broken bones as well. A word of caution for you, while it is wonderful for this particular use, it can be a bit too wonderful. Meaning that you may wanna wait till you've been to the doctor or the ER so that they can set the bone in its proper place or you can see that bone healing in the wrong place. And we don't want that. So back to that allantoin stuff I was talking about and this plant's anti-inflammatory and emollient and mucilaginous properties. I absolutely, without a doubt, would not hesitate to turn to comfrey in the event of a burn. I mean, a burn is inflammation at its finest. It's hot, hot, hot. And the anti-inflammatory properties, the cooling emollient properties, and the skin cell regenerating properties here are really going to help out. Truth is, there's so many reasons and ways to use comfrey as medicine I couldn't cover them all inside of this video. It's just impossible. And well, I'm trying to keep it all to summer fun and first aid kinds of things here. But this is the truth with so many herbs and plants. They're useful for beyond what they're mostly spoken about in social media. These plants are powerful in so many ways. And before I can quit my chat on comfrey, I really need to state that there's some safety precautions about comfrey. And while many people have used comfrey internally, it's also got pyrazidoline alkaloids and they are known to be hepatotoxic or damaging to your liver. So unless you're working with a skilled herbalist or other healthcare practitioner, I suggest you avoid taking comfrey internally. All right, okay, we've got comfrey and yara out of the way. And now, are you ready? Because this is an herb I talk about a lot. It very well could be my favorite herb ever. Well, it's definitely in my top three, for sure. 
I love it because it's abundant, like so abundant, many people can't get rid of it. It's darn near everywhere and highly likely growing right next to you, right when you need it. Plants are really cool that way. And this plant has so many medicinal uses, I can't stop talking about it, but I'll keep it in the name of first aid today. So if you listen to my podcast or tune into my YouTube, you may already know what plant or weed that I'm talking about. I love it that much that I can't resist talking about it for so many uses. It's plantain. Again, not the banana plantain, but the herb, Plantago Major. If you don't know what it looks like, well, now you do. And I know it's growing somewhere near you. And this plant has an amazing ability to draw out infection. So if you've got some kind of infection on the skin, you can apply plantain and it will help to get rid of the infection, especially when you pair it with something like echinacea or another antimicrobial plant that's specific for the skin. It also helps to draw out venom and the sting from various bug bites or bee stings, wasp stings, and yes, I've even known people to use it out in the wild when their dog was bitten by a snake. I've used it to remove splinters from rough and tough carpenter's hands. Yeah, this particular carpenter didn't seem so tough when he was crying to me about his splinter. And he doubted me, thought I was crazy, when I grabbed a cotton ball and my jar of plantain tincture and I asked him to place the cotton ball on his splinter. Then, 10 minutes later, he takes off the cotton ball and whammo, like that, the splinter came out. Just like magic. Plant magic. My daughter has known this plant since she was so little. In fact, I think every kid needs to be able to use and identify this plant. When Anira was three, we were playing at the park with some friends and someone fell and got an ouchie. My sweet little girl, the innate healer that she is, turned to find some plantain growing nearby, went and picked a leaf and brought it to her little friend. Of course, the friend and the friend's parents had no idea what she was doing. But at that moment, I knew I had done something incredibly right about being a mama. Plantain is amazing for cuts and scrapes and bruises and bee stings and really all kinds of itchy skin things. And yes, I'd use it for stubborn burns, whether uh, uh, someone manning the grill or womaning the grill or playing around the fire. And yes, it is stellar for sunburn. I love to use it infused in some nice light yummy oil with calendula and comfrey and some aloe. It is straight magic. Your skin's gonna drink it up and thank you for it. You can also use plantain for nasty stuff like poison oak or poison ivy. Use it for rashes, including things like diaper rash and dermatitis. It's truly, truly amazing. And again, it's so easy to find. It's hard to not find a sustainable source. So you can feel really, really good about it when you use it. Next time someone gets a bug bite or bee sting near you, I highly encourage you to find some plantain. Either chew it up, don't worry, it's not poisonous and actually has many internal uses as medicine too. Or you can just mash it up with a rock if you don't feel safe and apply it to the affected area via what's called a poultice. Again, plantain, like most herbs I talk about, is powerful as medicine in so many ways. These plants are here for us to use and we must choose to use them in safe, wise, and regenerative ways. I encourage you to stock your shelves and your gardens with plenty of plantain, yards of yarrow, and tons of comfrey. Get out there and make your own darn medicine. And of course, if you found this video to be helpful, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave me a comment and let me know what you learned and share this with your friends so that we can make herbalism spread like wildflowers. I wish you the most 
fun summer you've ever had.